Okay, folks. Uh, so my name's Martin Crullers. I'm the site director for the excavations at the Cairns in South Ronald to here in Orkney. And Orkney Archaeology Society, uh, OES, very kindly offered me the opportunity to answer questions of the public. So uh, people have been very kind in sending in their questions to Orkney Archaeology Society or to the project Facebook uh, page, Facebook Friends of the Cairns. And those questions have been gathered together and I'm going to answer them uh, presently. Um, well, first thing to say is I'll probably do this in a few stages because there's been quite a few questions, <laughs> uh, quite a lot actually. Um, lots of people have been sending their queries and their comments in, which has been really good. It's really nice to see the interest that people have got in the project and in the excavations and hopefully it sparks people's imaginations. It certainly does mine. So what we might do is uh, break this down into a few different sections. So we'll maybe do it in a, a number of parts. Um, I've gathered together all the questions from Orkney Archaeology Society. And I've got a little PowerPoint presentation, uh, which I'll switch between uh, simply because uh, I can bring up some images of some of the things that are relevant to the sorts of things people have asked. So we'll kick off, shall we? And I'll just bring up this, this uh, PowerPoint. So here we go, the Cairns Q&A for the Orkney Archaeology Society. And the first question that I've got down is from Sue Dyke, who's well known to us in the project. She had quite a lot of questions here, actually. So I'll maybe, I'll maybe uh, uh, answer a few of these now and a few of them later on, because um, they overlap with some of the things that some, some of the other uh, queries have asked as well so we'll maybe dip in and out of these as we go one of the things that sue asked was um about artifacts and the artifacts that have been found on site and um the ones in particular that don't originate locally i.e exotic objects uh and and what we know about their origins so if i go to this slide here hopefully this sums up some of the situation so you've got a number of objects here glass beads a variety of different kinds, shards of glass here, uh, and this black semicircular object here, which is a kind of a, it's made from a cannel coal or lignite, uh, part of the shale sort of family of stone. Um, and this isn't a local material in Orkney at all. Um, you find it in places like Brora, uh, and in the kind of Inverness area as well, but but probably it stems from somewhere in the north mainland of Scotland, uh, in that region of Brora. And it's dark, shiny stone, eminently carvable because it's quite soft. Um, and people were making things like bangles and rings and uh, other things out of it. This is maybe a fragment of a finger ring. We've had a few of these, had three or four of these um, types of objects uh, from this type of material that we found on site. And it's obviously not local, um, but it does come from within the sphere of the Northern Atlantic Iron Age realm, I suppose, if we want to put it in those terms. This thing here is a blue glass bead. That's a Roman type of bead, a biconical bead. So that's actually come from somewhere in the Roman province or further afield, somewhere along the networks of the Roman Empire. Um, and presumably come up from south, from the province, uh, into the north of Scotland uh, and into uh, into Orkney. So again, what we might call an import. This one here, little yellow glass bead, um, beautiful little thing, but um, itself, again, uh, would have been made in the north of Scotland, somewhere like, uh, somewhere in the Murrayshire area again, actually, somewhere like Kaldathal, uh, where recent evidence of glass production has been found, or somewhere like um, uh, Calvin Sands, again, in that kind of Marisha area. And it made there by Northern Iron Age communities or societies, uh, but using Roman materials, using Roman glass uh, from emanating from the province or actually further afield, 
uh, from 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 somewhere in the eastern Mediterranean. Quite a lot of the, the blue glass and some of the yellow glass has recently been shown to originate from uh, the eastern Mediterranean via the networks that made up the Roman Empire. So it's astonishing to think how far these things have travelled. And again, a little glass shard here, which may be a tiny fragment of another little glass bead, but it may be from actual Roman vessel glass. These things are found in Iron Age Orkney. We are finding a lot of materials that have stemmed from outside of, of Orkney on the site that maybe that's to do with the, the acuity, uh, the finesse with which we're excavating and sampling, because uh, we're doing that with quite a considerable degree of of um, diligence and therefore we have maybe sometimes have a, a good tendency to find some of these tiny little objects. You can see just how minuscule this object is. Um, sometimes things are small are only ever retrieved uh, from uh, wet sieving and sampling. That's from the environmental samples um, that we produce on site. But this particular piece was actually hand recovered uh, last season during last season's excavations in 2019. So very well spotted. And again, just maintaining the same theme, more exotica, if you will. Uh, this glass bead, beautiful northern uh, Iron Age bead produced first or second century AD with a yellow swirling pattern that you can just about still make out on it. Um, this object, so different again, not glass this time, but amber. Um, that's it backlit, showing that beautiful uh, orangey amber, uh, almost it's almost like vulcanicity. It's almost like beautiful, almost lava-like, showing through the the dark pattern of the of the amber uh, exterior surface. But it's an amber bead. Amber does wash ashore from time to time in Orkney, um, certainly. Uh, so it could have been made locally, um, but obviously, ultimately, the materials come from the Baltic, and it may be that it is it is an import again. It may be coming through networks of exchange uh, that exist that even in uh, the first or second centuries AD, which are quite far flung networks across the North Atlantic. Um, be interesting if that is the case, um, because obviously it's it's well before the Viking period um, that amber first starts to make its appearance. In, order, in fact, you have amber going back into the Bronze Age even. So more exotica. And then this much, much later, talking to the Vikings, this assuredly is a Viking object. This object is a a steatite or soapstone bowl. Um, we think um, it actually probably comes from southern Norway itself, uh, rather than Shetland, which is the nearest geological source of soapstone. But we don't have soapstone in Orkney. Uh, we have it in Shetland. And this, uh, though, is probably a, a Scandinavian-derived uh, type of soapstone. So there's, there's quite a lot of exotica on site. Another little example, another little um, greeny blue glass bead, a beautiful uh, bead fragment here. Um, and these are obviously really interesting objects, really fascinating objects that have, uh, we don't know quite what value would have been ascribed to these objects. We don't know whether these objects were seen as particularly rare and valuable and, and coveted by a local population or whether um, actually out with our archaeological awareness, there were many more of these things in circulation. I, I suspect not huge amounts of these objects are around, and they, they probably do have a, a kind of a, an association with value and maybe status, and maybe to have or to possess or to wear some of these objects or use some of these objects was was um, implied status because you're you're demonstrating your awareness of a wider world. You're demonstrating your how au fait you are with wider networks and the use of Roman material like the Roman glass or the beads derived from the north of Scotland but outside of Orkney, um, th th those again might well be showing people's ability to connect to these to these uh, further flung corners of the world and that in itself might require or demand that people recognise their status because of that. So it's interesting stuff assuredly. So we uh, we'll leave it there for now. Uh, 